is uh, actually simple, but uh, we make it uh, complicated. That's what it looks like. So I have two very small presentations. This is just, I mean, all of us are, as you can see, and most of us are very senior practitioners, and each one of us will have our own experience. These are not big cases, but this is something which uh, appeared unusual to me, so I thought it may be worth uh, just discussing, not for any big take-home message, but uh, just for uh, discussion. Uh, liver enzyme, particularly OTPT, will be grossly elevated in parent-fibrin liver disease. In obstructive liver disease, it's usually the alkaline phosphatase. This is common knowledge and this is uh, uh, very well known. Yes? All of us are aware that uh, when the liver enzymes, OTPT, DGTP rises, it means usually parenchymal liver diseases. Indirect phenomenon means hemolysis. This is a common thing. And this is a slide which um, all of us have seen in every textbook uh, to say these are the various causes of uh, um, biliary disorders causing a rise in the, like in the senior anger age group, Hilbert syndrome, hemolysis. And the amino transfers is normal in that. And alcohol phosphate is normal. Virus in hepatosomal disorders, both fractions may be elevated. Grossly, that is indicating parenchymal disease, often greater than 500. Alcohol phosphate is usually not elevated in these cases. In a chronic hepatosomal disease, both fractions may be elevated, but um, usually less than 300. In uh, alcoholic hepatitis, also, there may be a rise in the OTPT, and the alcohol phosphate usually doesn't rise so much. And again, in intra as well as extra hepatic uh, polystasis, what we call a substructive joint is the um, alkaline phosphate is grossly elevated. There may be only a moderate elevation in the uh, liver enzymes. And these are the things which uh, all of us are familiar. It doesn't require a big uh, uh, slide for that. Next. Next. Uh, this is, a, I mean, all uh, common garden cases. This is a male age of about 30 years, non-smoker, non-alcoholic. No past history of hospitalization. No past history of hospitalization. No history of ulcer dyspepsia. And he was admitted with uh, severe abdominal pain, vomiting and fever. Restless. Heart rate was quite fast. Tachycardia 1 to 140 was the heart rate. There was tenderness in the epigastrium. Bowels were also aggressive. I saw his outpatient and uh, Immediately the mind, I mean, no history of past, history of past, uh, he thought of, uh, I thought of uh, only a straightforward case of hypertitis, although there was no evidence of any all communication or so. So my diagnosis of the outpatient was hypertitis. Next. Last one. And uh, we put him in the hospital, the total call was elevated, 22,000, polymorphs were 80, and uh, is not diabetic, um, blood sugar 108, urea grade is normal, electrolytes is normal. Serum amylase and lipase confirmed it's uh, acute pancreatitis. At that time, I was home, make a diagnosis of uh, uh, pancreatitis, and usual management of. Uh, Usual management of uh, pancreatitis with uh, I mean, antibiotics may not be given, but in this case, we are one PCA, so we gave antibiotics, give a high fluids, large two. And we did ultrasound. The ultrasound showed the uh, increased echo pattern with the pancreas being obscured. We did a CT because uh, we want to make sure we are not missing anything else. So it showed bulky pancreas with uh, peripancreas. With uh, very pancreatic fat stranding, minimal fluid along the tail of pancreas. This is suggestive of uh, actual pancreatitis. And the liver show post pancreas and post nodular surface. This is the picture I thought uh, we hope the patient uh, pain seemed to subside. And uh, I thought it was just pancreatitis. And uh, third, fourth day, we did the amylase. The amylase had come down, the had come down. Uh, However, to my surprise, I found that the bilirubin is 11.7, direct bilirubin was 9.6, and indirect was 
whereas the OTPK alkyl phosphatase, NPSAT and HCP are negative. This is what um, I mean, we are asking for trouble because in the sense that this we can say, okay, it can cause some moment of obstruction, can raise, but I have never seen uh, of the order of uh, the acetylbilirubin going up to 11 and direct 9.6, whereas the liver enzymes are totally normal. This is bilirubinemia without any evidence of a pancreatic disease. And alkaline phosphatase is also normally indicating possibly there's no obstruction. This is where the problem looks in the sense that uh, we are dealing with pancreatic is all right, like a is well elevated, but bilirubin was so high, OTPT and alkaline phosphatase were normal. So, and I was at a loss to find out what causes jaundice, which are normal liver enzymes, and we had tested for everything, and there was no evidence any bilirubin stones or uh, obstruction in there to cause such a rise in bilirubin. And the liver enzymes are normal, and the phosphate is normal. So, this is the question. Patient with the jaundice, fairly high 12, liver enzymes normal, alkyl phosphate is normal, no obstruction. This is the problem we had. So, but luckily for me, I mean, uh, we all go back and read the books. So, I do in when bicardic disease can occur. It can occur due to extra hepatic obstruction, hepatocellular disease, or idiopathic. In this case, there was no evidence of hepato, uh, extra hepatic obstruction. I mean, we did a MR, uh, this one also, ERCP is the study of choice, or MRCP should be the study of choice, or finding out if there's really obstruction. But at least the CP did show in his Hepatocellular disease, in terms of OTPT, there was no such evidence. And possibly idiopathic occurs in about 20 to 30 percent of cases. Whether well, there's a transitory peritactula pancreatic edema, and this may account for the elevated bilirubin in this case. And uh, luckily for me, the patient's uh, symptoms subsided, the liver enzyme, the cytobilirubin also came down to normal in this case. The second case is uh, male, age 28. He presented with high fever of 104. All of us are familiar in town. All of us are seeing any number of uh, cases of fever nowadays. Patient presented with vomiting, headache, and severe body pain. I mean, most of us, uh, when the temperature goes beyond 101, 102, 103, we have been very happy with these patients. And uh, his pulse was 90, temperature 103. And systemic examination, he's a strapping young man. Uh, systemic examination was totally normal. On investigation, uh, there was a of 3,600, which was 80,000. Other than parameters, including LFT, were normal. And as expected, I mean, all of us have seen cases of dengue. Dengue illness one was positive. I thought it was pain dengue, treated with high fluids and passport. Fever seemed to be less, uh, 100 degrees. But he had in addition abdominal pain and vomiting with a tachycardia. Uh, I was wondering what it could be. He had pain, he had abdominal pain, he had vomiting, he had dengue positive. I was fairly sure we are treating with dengue. Whether there was any bleeding, although the count of uh, platelets was 80,000. But I was wondering whether he had any bleeding. He was uh, very sick. He was quite sick. And uh, we did an ultrasound of abdomen, which showed a gall bladder edema and fetus of a ear calculus cystitis. And hence, we had to treat him with uh, antibiotics. And we repeated the lab parameters. The hemoglobin was normal. The total count remained 3,800. The serum was 2. Whereas the liver enzymes were markedly elevated, 3,214 to 1,338. These were the liver enzymes of this patient who came for dengue, had high fever, A calculus cholecystitis on the ultrasound, and uh, the liver enzymes were so high, but the serum was normal, alkaline phosphatase was also normal. All the tests for uh, finding out whether any other cause was there, that means HL. HCV, HCV, and HIV, as well as Peptospiral and HIV. So here we have another case 
Well, the simple reviews normal, but they say OTP key has sky high. Untreated with the antispasmodics and antacids, and after four days, pain subsidies, inflammation of the gallbladder also reduced, and by about seven days, it even enzymes and return to normal. Liver involvement in negotiation uh, is not uncommon. It may be due to hypoxic injury, and hypoxic injury due to increased perfusion. That can cause the rise in the enzymes, the direct damage by the virus itself, or uh, autoimmune mediated injury. Liver injury appears to take about five to six days. It's not detected in the first LFT, but may and do not first day LFT may not show us any OTPT elevation or some elevation, but subsequently it comes up. So it can appear a little late. So two cases, one of pancreatitis with a high uh, bilirubin normal enzymes, another with a normal bilirubin and very high enzymes. But these are common cases we see. This is just for sharing my knowledge. Thank you. The second case, when you said the enzymes were high, uh, we come across when patients were treated with sodium valproate. We come across hepatitis with such a very high uh, values of Liver enzymes. Is there any history of any drugs? No, this is a strapping enzyme, and he's actually a medical representative. And I, I agree with you, maybe drug induced, you want to mention, but uh, uh, no such history was available. This is the first time he's hospitalized, first time he had come. I thought it was playing a stressful dengue fever, which all of us handled. But to my horror and surprise, luckily, uh, it turned out to be all. So, first case, you already have done a CT scan. Because the pancreatic edema yeah. is very, very common. Because uh, like uh, inflammation, edema, that will raise this one. So how early you have done it for the first case, the CT case? We did it on the fourth day only. We did it on the fourth day. I mean, honestly, I was worried because when you tell the patient you got pancreatitis, we are all dealing with educated patients. So I don't know whether we are telling you about pancreatitis or we got a liver problem and what liver problem is, is all other things are normal. Because we have seen a lot of cases like this pancreatic edema. Right? CT also will show that pancreatic edema will be there. There are no other changes with pancreatic that will not be detected at all. Or the interface between the gastric mucosa and this one will be lost. Okay. That thing, whatever you said, no, that will be there. Yeah, my yeah, simple pancreatic edema. Yeah, simple pancreatic edema. Yeah. That's what, there is a large series of about maybe 120 cases or 130 cases where they, I had to ask, see the literature, find out about it. So they mentioned this causes, an idiopathic cause, it can cause this thing. 